Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. Welcome to our service from the Ingleborough team of churches today. I'm here at St John's Church in Bentham uh, for this service today. Uh, this church is presently closed for its reordering works and so the congregation of St John's uh, are meeting up in High Bentham uh, for an afternoon service but also getting out around the team of churches and it's been lovely to see those of uh, the congregation here that we know in our other parishes and lovely to join together for worship. In this service we're thinking about the theme of living well as a Christian. In challenging times we constantly need to think about how we can be people of love, how we can live well as the people that God has called us to be. Later in our service we're going to be hearing from a couple of our readers from the ministry team here at our churches, from Judith who will be preaching for us and Sheila who will be leading us in our prayers. As we begin this service let's pray together. Lord of life, we offer ourselves to worship you. Shape us and lead us, that we may serve you in all we do, for the kingdom of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Let's turn now to our first hymn. to serve and in 
Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Hello, my name is Judith and today I'd like to talk to you 
about leading a Christian life and what could happen if we don't. Now recently we've had many instructions about how to live a Christian life. Paul, last week, didn't mince his words. He was very direct. Put on the armour of God to protect you from evil, he said. In our church in Bentham, Tony Wilmont gave us a picture of a Roman soldier dressed for battle against popular culture with a helmet of salvation, a belt of truth, a breastplate of righteousness and a helmet of salvation. But most importantly, the shield of faith to help us to live God's laws and not our own. And this week, James, who we think was John's brother, Jesus's brother, joins in. He tells us, get rid of all moral filth and evil that's prevalent. And that's really putting it bluntly. But moral filth, what does that mean? From our other reading in Mark, we have a list from verse 21. I'll read it. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, lewdness, evil, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. You might well say, and I hope that you do, that you're not a thief or a murderer, but what about all the rest? Can you honestly say that you've never been greedy, malicious, envious, arrogant or just plain stupid and regretted it afterwards? Think of a radio not tuned in properly. We can hear what's said, but only faintly. There are so many distractions. So with our lives, can we tune out those worldly values? Because we're constantly being manipulated. What food to buy, what clothes to wear, where to bank our money, how to ask assert ourselves because we are worth it. That phrase really gets me going. <laughs> but most of all and but most of all we're manipulated <clears throat> by the information we receive. We can only form an opinion from the information we're given, but there's always another viewpoint. We can help <clears throat> we can have help from God with his armour of God based on our Christian values of love and concern for others, putting ourselves second and not first in all we do, and listening. From James again, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. What good advice. Be a good listener. Listen first and then speak. Speech can be so damaging. Once you've said it, you can't take it back. I had a friend who played the clarinet. We used to play in the pit orchestras for shows and musicals, in theatres like the Winter Gardens in Morecambe. And when he made a mistake and played a wrong note, he used to say, there's no rubber in music. And there's no rubber in speech either. Once you've said it, you can't unsay it. Can you remember wishing you had not said something? Maybe it was not kind or considerate, or selfish or rude. Or perhaps we just refused to see another's point of view because it was different from our own. Struggles for power and influence where we do not listen before we speak and act and do not practice a loving godly life can lead to revenge, anger and extremism. To restate this quote from James, be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to be angry. Now at the moment, Afghanistan is very much on our minds. Perhaps if both sides had listened, and try to understand, there would have been a dialogue and not revenge or bloodshed. Because that's not God's way. 
and now we're left with a desperate situation and wondering how it will all end. So now I'd like to pray, I'd like to end this talk with a prayer for all those in Afghanistan and particularly those in Kabul. And we pray for the needs, for the needs of those with nothing except the clothes that they're wearing. For children in the crush of desperate people seeking escape. For the future of families seeking new homes and security. For all those who have left behind someone they love. For the future of the country and for what lies ahead. And for people in danger who will be left behind. Lord, help us to help them. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who created us to be sisters and brothers in Christ, hear us as we lift our hearts in thanksgiving and praise, and hear our prayers and intercessions for all those in need. We pray for our fellowship. We thank you for the fellowship of the church family. 
May our worship not only honour you with our lips, but also with our hearts and minds and lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for peace in this very troubled world. We pray especially for the desperate situation in Afghanistan, for the people there struggling to bring relief from suffering, for those who are assuming leadership, that they may do so with compassion. We pray for a time when the weapons of war will be replaced by creative life in community, when oppression will be overcome by justice, when lies and deceit will be replaced by truth and integrity, and when hatred and cruelty will be replaced with your spirit of love and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, thank you for our friends and neighbours and for those around us with whom we work and share our daily lives. We thank you for all the joys and blessings of life. Help us when we quarrel or fall out to have the humility to put things right and to forgive one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we raise before you all those whose lives are restricted by illness. We remember the chronically ill, those in constant pain, the depressed and the despairing. We pray especially for those in our own families and communities whom we know and we name them before you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died and whose anniversary we recall. Help us to discover the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more with you in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we have shared with you our petitions, requests and thanksgivings. So now we ask for the blessing of your presence in the week ahead. We pray that you will guide us, guard us, and keep us safe in all we do and say. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you for joining us in this service of worship. I hope it's helped you to reflect on living as a Christian in the world and think about those who are particularly in need. We're going to close with a final prayer of blessing in a moment, but I wanted to, as I'm here recording at St John's, I wanted to come and have a look at the cross here. If you'll have worshipped at St John's or watched some of the online services, you'll have seen this cross uh, with all the flowers planted within it a number of times over the last few months. And I have to say, it's lovely to have seen it taking shape and changing across the seasons. We're going to be giving thanks for this natural world in a season of creation starting soon, so do keep an eye out for services coming up. My thanks to all who serve in our parishes, to our readers who've been with us today. But let's close with a final prayer of blessing. May Christ's holy, healing, enabling spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and turn. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>